Sokota, Italia Panta de Mosata, Etelemo Satana Masokota, Icapatuna Masata, Itana Masokota, Etelemo Sata, Ecapato Mosata, Etelemo Sataria, Ecapelemo Satiria, Etana Masokota, in the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. Welcome, day two. God is with us. Yes, Lord. Genesis 1, going. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, and it was void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. I know Apostle and I have been using this scripture over and over and over because we want you to catch the revelation. God deals with form. He's a God that deals with form. He said that you are the clay, he is the potter. The enemy, when he decides to sift you like wheat, when God prays for you, you become whole again. And so anytime you see scattering throughout the scriptures, many times, not all times, but many times, the enemy is the one that is doing it. And so anytime you feel as if your mind is scattered, you have decisions to make, and you don't know where to turn, where to go, know that the enemy is involved. He's involved in chaos. He's involved in, in just scattering things. But God, by reason of the scriptures, he is a God that puts things together. He's a God that make sure that you are formed before he releases you. And even then, every season, he forms you into a new thing. We talked about the hen. When the hen sits over her eggs, what happens is she does not move until they form, until they hatch, until they become. She broods over them. And just the same way the Holy Spirit broods over people, there are demonic presence that brood over people. And they make sure they do not leave you until you are scattered, until you are in the divorce, until you commit suicide. And so in this life, you must know that there are two alternatives at all times. Whatever God is doing, whatever the Spirit of God is doing, know that evil is a copycat. That's why you got to be careful about being a copycat. You can take from someone and be inspired from someone, but the minute you decide that you want to be them, that is witchcraft. That's witchcraft. And so God is into formation. He's a God that forms. Today we're saying that the Holy Spirit should brood over us. Yes, Lord. And if the Bible says that when he brooded, it took form, that means when he broods over us, we must take form. We must be able to make the proper decision. We must not be scattered in our minds. Anytime you feel that your mind is messed up, just know that an enemy is brooding over you. But well, he's not the author of confusion. And this is why you need to glorify any church that teaches you Jesus Christ. Woe unto you if you allow people to take you to prophets who will scatter your life. The work of God does not scatter. Because even if I give you a prophetic word that your mother is a witch, I do not expect you to go and disrespect her. So woe unto you if you hear prophecies. Leave immediately. Do this immediately. Be careful. God speaks in order and in wisdom. God is not into scattering. And when the Spirit of God is with us, there are many things that happen. And one of them is we begin not to love the world. If you find yourself loving the world too much, you better pray this prayer. Brood over me. 
If you find yourself, you want your body to look like the world, you want to dress like the world, your singing like the world, your hair's like the world, your buttons are like the world. When you begin to love the world, there's an issue. What grieves the Spirit of God should grieve you. Before, I used to laugh just like the rest of us. When we see men wearing uh, women clothes and they're doing comedy, kiki, 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 till the Holy Spirit rebuked me. Said, this is an abomination. This is an abomination. The minute you love the world too much, that means the Spirit of God is no longer brooding over you. What upsets God, if it does not upset you, you love the world. 1 John 2, 15 to 16. 1 John 2, 15 to 16. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. When you begin to lust after things, listen, we're all go-getters. We all want to become millionaires. But the minute you decide that you are lusting after money, I got to get this money. You are now entering into the realm of the rappers. You want to get this money so badly that you're willing to do anything. And now the enemy tempts you. I want to be married so badly that I'm willing to sleep with a married man. I want to do things so badly that you will end up going to get a fake butt. When you love the world too much. One thing Jesus did is he brought his teachings down to where the world was. And that's why I'm using the examples that I'm using. You want to be a nurse so badly that you're willing to cheat. Your life no longer glorifies God. When you love the world, then your father is not in you. And who is your father? He also is the spirit of God. He is, the, the, the Godhead is three. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are one. So what they're saying here is if you love the world, that means the spirit of God is not inside of you. If you entertain certain things, then the spirit of God is not inside of you. I stopped watching love and hip-hop many, many years ago. I said, this is no longer glorifying God. The more I see it, the more it's entering my body. If the word of God enters you and brings illumination and light, and it's able to take out darkness, that means when I'm watching those vile things, that is also taking my body as well too. You want to fast about marriage? I'm teaching you. You cannot love the world and say that the Spirit of God should brood over you. He's a helper. If you see yourself entering into that realm, this is the time you say, you must brood over me. When the Spirit of God broods over you, you no longer see marriage the way the world sees marriage. Now you desire a kingdom marriage. A marriage that before you thought we should go to the clubs, every day vacationing, popping bottles, doing this. When you desire that, when you see that online and your heart leaps like, Lord, what about me? Know that you're in the world. But when you see a couple that is lifting up the name of the Lord together, slaying demons, doing what they have to do in the realms of the spirit for generations. When you see a woman that is submitted, when you see a man that loves and cherish, and you begin to desire it, that's when you know that you are taking form. That's when you know you are taking form. When you no longer have that feminist agenda on you anymore, I can do it by myself, shut up, I, I, that is the world. 
When you no longer think that, that I, I, I can beat a woman because I, I'm the one who is financially stable or something. When you no longer think that you just pay, but you know that God said, love and cherish the woman. Nourish her. I was telling people the other day that most men are forgetting this part. They will nourish you. They'll pay the rent. They'll do everything they have to do. But they forget the cherishing part. But when the Spirit of God broods over you, you miss no parts of the Bible. His Spirit brings back things into remembrance. And the word remembrance is an indicator that it's already in you. It's just being pulled forward. When you know that the Spirit of God broods over you, believe it or not, you are active in the church of God. When your activity level in your local church goes down, and I'm speaking to the world at large, because sometimes you think it's only KFT. I'm more kingdom than KFT. KFT is the church that God put us in the best church on earth but I believe in kingdom and so before you leave me you will be more kingdom than more church based and so I'm talking to the church at large when you decide not to be active in your local church just know that an evil spirit is brooding over you and this is not manipulation for you to become a church worker at KFT we have too many right now but any time you see that your activity level in the church has gone down, just know that an enemy is brooding over you. Because think about it. Any time you are in love with Christ, any time you are zealous, you want to do the things of God. You are the one searching most of the time. What can I do to help? But the minute the enemy broods over you and brings offense, brings malice, brings carnality, then you shy away from the church naturally. To be processed, you must be a part of a local church. Local church government is provided by God to ensure the best conditions for an individual. What does that mean? Anytime God allocates you to a church, anytime God divinely plants you in a church, he gives that church a diet for you. And so the people who are attracted to KFT, they genuinely, one, need deliverance, and two, will be in the ministry of deliverance. Those who are here, they are formed into educational tycoons and business tycoons. And so God gives you a church and he gives you a diet. He gives you a priest that fits the diet that you need. The church I was in, my, my pastor back then, he was militant. When you finish preaching, he's not about to tell you you did a good job is on to the next did not understand why but God knew the diet that I needed that I was coming into a place especially being able to teach a generation that is already disrespectful I do not need to solicit your amen or your yes in order to preach the word of God and so that thing was formed inside of me in college and so God places you somewhere where the leader's head are like flint because he knows where you're going you you need you need to have your forehead like flint you need to be uncompromised you need to be bold in the word of god man or woman in this church men and women both preach you know many christians don't join a local church because they think the institution is foolish. They think it's unnecessary. However, nothing of spiritual value will be added to your life outside the local church. I'm telling you now, 
Submitting to the leadership of a church activates the power of God over your destiny and your purpose. Anytime you are outside the church of God, again, I'm not just talking about KFT, but anytime you find yourself outside the church of God, talking about I'll do virtual, I, I, I don't need a church. Woe unto you. That means you don't want to be formed. Because with your own carnal flesh, you will never decide to do a 21-day fast and actually go through with it. That's the truth. And that's why this thing is becoming its own phenomenon. Because when you come and you see how dangerously people are praying, you yourself, you realize, I need to get my life together. God gives you and places you where your diet needs to be. So when the spirit of the enemy broods over you, you tend to wander. Me, I don't need a membership at church. I don't need to be at church. That's the enemy telling you, I want to kill you. Make it easy for me. When the spirit of God broods over you, you are teachable. Anytime you see that you are not teachable, then the spirit of the enemy is what is brooding over you. Anytime you say, I know this already. This ain't mathematics and this ain't science. You see, in science, they keep giving us new textbooks. But we have the same chamber of hearts. We have the same fingers. It's just a ploy to get our money. That's fine. But when it comes to the spirit of God, a new revelation each time and so we do ourselves a disservice when we think oh the first three days is the normal thanksgiving and prayer and holy ghost this is the foundation these are the legs that you need for the next 21 days because after now we take off and we're praying diverse types of prayers tomorrow we're praying about faulty foundations what do you know about faulty foundations if you don't know anything about mercy if you don't understand that the Holy Spirit needs to brood over your foundation in the first place. So lest you get a revelation and a foundation and remain teachable, the enemy will always brood over you. The spirit of pride is dangerous and religiosity is what it covers itself. Oh, I know this already. Back in my old church. Well, go back to your old church. Go back to your old church. It's a new day at KFT. If you enroll in any institution of learning, there are some things that you have to learn and accept. You may have to simply understand that I don't understand. The Holy Spirit, each year we've been teaching it. It's what, eight years now since we started this fast, though the church is seven. It's eight years. Every day he gives us a new revelation about this Holy Spirit. Today, Apostle and I had a two-hour conversation about the Holy Spirit. And we both were amazed about what we found. And when we started to look up the Greek meanings and the Hebrew meanings of stuff, I'm like, my mind is blown. We don't just cut and paste, we actually study, just so we're clear. And so we were having a conversation, and I said, wow, if you don't remain teachable, the Holy Spirit cannot help you. You have to always come in. Lord, teach me something new. Enlighten me even more. Take me to another level. Ah. Uh, Allow me to refuse the standard quo, the status quo. Otherwise, every day, your only understanding of the Holy Spirit is in Acts chapter 2. And even then, you don't even know what happened there. But when you remain teachable, the Holy Spirit broods over you and you begin to take form. After this fast, 
the level of revelation that you will carry you'll be like a ticking time bomb when the enemy seeks to sift you now you're like a call upon the mercies of God when you see that you are getting confused Holy Spirit begin to brood over me now you are like dangerous you're like a Holy Ghost naked wire do you see the wires if we take the coating off of it and we touch it it will shock us that's what we need to be I always tell people the goal is to get the marriage the house so you could come back and testify about the babies but ultimately we want you to be so equipped in the realms of the spirit that you can be sent out that when the enemy comes near you see when the spirit of the enemy broods over you demons are attracted to you those of you who are always having a bad dream I must question you what spirit hovers over you when you sleep because the Holy Spirit when he gives you revelation and dream even if it's a bad dream you wake up with a level of strength even in your dream you begin to get back your bag you begin to kill the snake you you have some level of victory so if you're always having a bad dream today you're saying Lord hover over me let your spirit hover over me me too I deserve to see good dreams me too I deserve to see the things from afar some of you you have gotten sick from your dreams remember somebody said that they had a dream and someone was um, sucking their nipple they woke up the nipple started itching they went to the hospital how do you have stage 3 cancer what happened to stage one and stage two? How do you wake up with stage three cancer? This is why you cannot be in a hurry to go to sleep. Even my children, when they're in a deep sleep, wake up and pray. Pray over yourself. I taught them, pray. Holy Spirit should brood over you in your sleep. He should show you things. My COVID dream that went viral, that was my tired prayer. Apostle was next to me and I said, Holy Ghost, just speak to me. Visit me. It wasn't no long prayer. Everything that the dream had, if you go back, it has happened. Even to the point of the, the Nigerian woman who died. It was in my dream. So this Holy Spirit that broods over us. It's not just to, to say that me too, I see a light. What are you doing with the light? How has the light empowered you? When the Holy Spirit broods over you, you produce fruit. You produce fruit. John 15, 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine unless it abides in the Holy Spirit unless it abides in the presence of God neither can you unless you abide in me until you decide that I am always going to be in the presence of God your life will be tormented. This is why we have Christians who are always tormented. All the time you are in torment because you don't really go with the Holy Spirit. And you see the Holy Spirit is a Holy Spirit. So there are some places that you enter that he will not go with you. You cannot step into a strip club and expect the Holy Spirit to walk in there with you. You cannot expect to be in an area of gossip and the Holy Spirit stays there. And so the people who are tormented, they are the people that stay outside the presence of God. They are always at the wrong place at the wrong time. Never in the presence of God. While we're all here, they are the ones going to CVS to go and buy a battery for what? Mad random. I'm telling you, you got to know when the enemy is trying you. 
Every day you got to pee. You got to pee. You got to pee. You better command your body to sit there and listen to the word of God. Because the minute you go to the bathroom and distraction comes, that's when the, 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 the preacher will release the word that was attached to your situation. You can go to the bathroom. And I'm just saying, don't go 50 times in one sermon. You got to know when the enemy is pursuing you, when he's at your tail. And so you produce fruit when the Spirit of God hovers over you. And so these 21 days, if you know that your, 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 your life is fruitless, if your life is not producing the level of fruit that you have to, you better pray and cry out, Holy Spirit, brood over me. Brood over me. Brood over me. We often like to be religious and say that timetables, X, Y, and Z, blah, blah, blah. Oh, don't go with timetables when God decides to do it. God's time is whenever you begin to desire it. You don't desire a wife when you are in college somewhere. You don't desire a husband. You live in your best life. But when you come out, all of a sudden you realize that outside of college, life is a bit lonely. So I need somebody. And so you begin to desire it. But if you're not careful, the enemy will make you think that getting married at 60 is just as glorious as getting married in your 20s or 30s. Some of you won't like me for this. But I got to tell you the truth. God gets glory when you get married at 60, 70, 80, or 90. But there is much more glory when you can say that I am 50 years in. I'm 60 years in. I'm 100 years in. Don't let the enemy lie to you. When the Spirit of God broods over you, you begin to see, mm, my life is becoming a mockery. Lord, you must sit on me until I form. I need to produce fruit. My father died in May. They buried him on my birthday. When the casket hit the floor, the Holy Spirit told me your marriage is under attack. Why? Because some years back, the Lord had told me that the particular year that my dad died, which was in 2015 or 2013, was the year that I was going to get married. He told me 2013 is when you're going to get married. When the casket hit the floor, I said, oh, no, something is wrong. Holy Spirit said, your marriage is under attack. Not knowing someone had hijacked my husband, but I had to re-hijack him in the realms of the Spirit. I had to ask the Holy Spirit, go brood over the man until his mind comes back to him. Let him come back where he belongs. Today I prophesy to you uh, that a manifestation of the Spirit of God uh, should brood over your situation for you to claim what is yours in the realms of the Spirit. The brooding when it happens, it takes what is yours. And the thing is, I wasn't even praying for him in particular. I just knew my marriage was under attack. Never once did I pray for apostle. I said, Holy Spirit, let my life not be a mockery. Let me take form as a wife. You've given me a marriage ministry, but nobody's going to listen to me unless I have a man next to me. And I had some friends, and the friends, when I gave them advice, they told me, girl, you never had a boyfriend in the first place. And so I said, Lord, my life is becoming a mockery. You have given me a level of wisdom in marriage, even though I have never been married. But no one will listen to me until I get married. So you got to get me married. And so I began to pray. And I caught my husband in the spirit. Didn't know who he was. I just knew he was a man of God. Didn't know who he was, but I knew he was called for a generation. Didn't know who he was, but I caught him in the realms of the spirit. That whoever I'm with, when they step on the scene, they, they carry a level of presence with them. And so when he came tall, dark, and handsome, carrying presence, as the Holy Spirit brood over us. Brood over us. 
Your life must produce fruit. This is why we're fasting. We're not fasting just to say we did 21 days. We're fasting to see tangible results. We're fasting because we desire that our marriage, all this turning over our plate, that we will not end up divorced 40 years down the line. The enemy is a liar. 40 years, where else are you going? Sit down and figure it out. But when the enemy begins to brood over your marriage, that which was so sweet and beautiful, now all of a sudden, I need a divorce. You wonder how some people can stay married so long and then just like that, they tear apart. And this is what keeps us praying all the time for our marriage. Remember, this thing started because of us entering into marriage. Because we saw the pattern. People were getting married. It looked glorious. And it's not like they got divorced within five, six years. We, I remember 2015. It was a whole bunch of celebrities, 40 years of marriage, 45, 30 years of marriage, 50 years. Where are you going? So that means if you do not stay vigilant, the enemy comes in, comes in. And so when we say, uh, Holy Spirit, brood over me. Brood over me till thy kingdom come, not just this fasting. Keep brooding over me all the time. Until my only gaze is you, spirit, keep brooding over me. Keep brooding over me. Told you the young lady who sang the song, Behold Until We Are Formed. The Holy Spirit gave her that revelation. I'm sure of it. Because you cannot be formed without the spirit of God brooding over you. And when the spirit of God broods over you, 1 John 3.10. You practice righteousness. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. When the spirit of God is not over you, you do not practice righteousness. The Bible speaks in the book of Psalm that the, the Lord hates an imbalanced scale what is that a scammer anyone who likes to give people low quality at high prices unrighteousness when you love unrighteousness you are always looking seductive knowing that somebody's husband is standing there when you love unrighteousness, you are always cheating. I'm not going to study. I'm always going to look over my shoulder. And the spirit of God broods over you. You walk a straight and narrow path. You walk a straight and narrow path. You become uncompromised. Today we're going to pray that as he broods over us, we learn this morning that when he broods over us, he convicts us. When the word comes forth, it's not the human that does the convicting. It is the spirit of God attached to the word of God that convicts you. When the Holy Spirit is with you, it gives you confidence. You are as bold as a lion. Many people testify to you. If you come to my house, I'm in my room. I don't bother anybody. I like to be by myself. Why? Because the prophetic just discerns a lot of people. And so when there's too many people around, I can't take it. I go. But when it's time to be hospitable, I'm there serving, drinking, doing whatever I have to do for people. But when the spirit of God is upon you, you become so bold. And so people see me and they're like, oh, first lady, did I do something while well, you're not giving me the same energy? I'm like, girl, when I'm here, I'm a different person. I'm bold. The spirit of God is brooding over me, making sure I deliver the word to you. When I'm by myself, I'm very shy. I, I like to be by myself. My children are my best friends. My husband is my best friend. When the spirit of God is with you, it comforts you. It gives you a level of comfort. So anytime you're feeling some type of way, anytime you feel that your heart is grieving, 
Holy Spirit, come and comfort me right now. Come and comfort me right now. When you know your heart has been broken, Holy Spirit, come and comfort me right now. Apostle always shares a story about the day that his ex left. He said that he laid on the bed and something shook out of him. That is the comfort of the Spirit of God. It will not allow you to keep in grievance. And so again, what the world will tell you is that when someone breaks your heart, go and get ice cream, go sit on the bed, cry for at least one month, and do all these type of things. But when you understand the work of the Holy Spirit is to help you, two seconds max, let's go. You don't have time to sit there and cause the enemy to add demonic weight to you. That is not the will of God. When the Spirit of God is with you, he fights your battles. He fights your battles. I always say, I don't like to attribute bad things to Apostle and I. But a couple messed with us before we started this church. They messed with us badly. Apostle stood on a Bible. He was so grieved in his spirit. We had just had Junior. He was so grieved. I've never seen him that grieved before. He stood on a Bible and he declared that, Lord, lift me to a place where I don't have to feel this thing anymore and deal with them that deal with me. Do you know <laughs> that they were sitting there and their roof just caved in on them? I told you, I don't like to attribute bad things to us. But you must know that the Spirit of God can fight for you at a level. I couldn't cave nobody's roof in. They are sitting there and their whole roof, imagine us, God forbid, just the roof caving in. A, a, a building that did not need any work done. But when you touch God's anointed, it's no longer with you and the person because the spirit of the Lord steps in. If you hit my child right now, it's not you and my child that will have the issue. I step in between the situation and I now have to fight you for my child. The same way the spirit of the Lord steps in, he enters in, he lifts up a standard. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that he lifts up a standard. And so it's no longer you and the vessel fighting anymore. It's you and the Spirit of God fighting. And what, who can beat the Spirit of God? The stone that David threw. The Spirit of the Lord was upon that stone. It was not just a normal stone. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you are creative. You carry a level of creativity. And so anytime you feel like you've been dull, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't even know what to put together to dress. I don't know what business to start. When you are not creative, you must know that an enemy has entered and is brooding over you. Today in prayer, the Lord said many of them have brain fog. It's like your mind is just all over the place. For some reason, you cannot concentrate. There's just too much going on and your mind is just so foggy. You are allowing an ulterior spirit to brood over you. The spirit of God brings about peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. And that's why you can have someone who has mad money, a whole bunch of money, super millionaire status, but then you'll find that they went to go and kill themselves. But you who are broke like a joke, you're sitting there calling upon the Lord, just enjoying the peace of God because your mind is not funny. It's not in a funny phase. But may the Lord make you a millionaire with a peace of mind. He is the one who gives and he adds no sorrow to it. When the Spirit of the Lord is with you, you commune. He drops a song in your spirit at all times. He drops a scripture in your spirit at all times. When you are sleeping, you are praying, and you don't even know how it's happening. When the Spirit of the Lord is with you, you are always communing. One word can bring out a whole bunch of songs for you. The Lord begins to write things for you. 
When the Spirit of the Lord is with you, you commune. You can sit there and cry, not because you're sad, but because you can think about the faithfulness of God in your life. This is why we cry in worship. This is why sometimes in praise, you can dance so much that you just feel like it's only you there. And you begin to dance like David did. And those who are watching are looking at you like a foolish king. How can you dance like that? But we, we cast our crowns when we come into the house of God. The Spirit of the Lord brings you counsel. It gives you counsel. It gives you direction. It allows you to see. It opens your eyes. The Spirit of the Lord in his counsel is his word as well too. And so sometimes you'll realize, you'll open a scripture, you'll turn to the Bible app, and you're like, wow, this scripture is speaking to me. That's the spirit of counsel that is attached to the word of God. And so today we're going to pray. And we're telling God that as we behold these 21 days, may he form us. May he form us. May he form us. May he form us. I want you to be on your feet. Today we're asking the Holy Spirit to open our eyes and expose the enemy. This is for the singles. Lord, expose this man to me before I commit my heart to him. Expose this woman to me before I commit my heart to her. Expose if this opportunity is from you or it's from the enemy. Expose any wicked persons that are around me. Expose them. Expose any church member that comes with an evil agenda in this house. You are praying that, Lord, as you brood over me, open my eyes. Let my eyes take form. Let my only gaze be you that I can see. Seeing is not only for the prophet. Seeing is for the believer. It is, your, it is your mandate and your right to be able to see the enemy behind the scenes. You're saying that, Lord, expose them to me. Expose them to me. Every aunt, expose them to me. If I've been thinking they're wicked and they're not, expose them to me. Let me see so I can have a level of reverence for them too. Let me see their hearts. When people come into this church and they want to be chummy chummy with us, the first thing I say, Lord, expose their hearts to me. And so out of Apostle and I, I am the one that takes the longest. Because I know how hard we've had to fight to get where we are. So just because you come doesn't mean that I'm going to be friendly with you and eat your food and take your drinks and every gift you buy me I'm going to wear. The devil is a liar. You will not quench the anointing. Jesus. And those are for the ministers in the house. And when the Lord begins to do a work in you and people are so nice to you and here I want to give you this gift and you pray over it. You pray over it. I know a man of God, somebody gave him cake. He was discerning enough, didn't eat the cake. Two days came by, he cut the cake, there was blood inside of it. He went to church, the church member asked him, you didn't eat the cake. How you know? You, you pray. The discerning of spirits is not just for evil spirits either. Because some of us religious folk, we think that when we talk about discernment, it's only to see bad things. Discernment can make you see a king in diapers. When someone who looks like a nobody and everyone is passing by them, you, because the Lord has shown you that this one is about to be a tycoon, you're like, let me get my front row seat. You need a ride, brother. You need a ride, sister. You are able to discern a king even in diapers. Holy Spirit, help me. Brood over us today. Yes, Lord. Help my eyes take form. Yes, Lord. Help my eyes to see. Yes, Lord. Say tonight. Tonight. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Help me. Help me. Expose to 
to me. Expose to me. Show me. Show me. That witch has been hidden unto me tonight as I pray. Expose all that needs to be exposed in my dreams as I walk, as I talk, as I daydream. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord. Expose them, O oh Lord. Expose them, O oh Lord. Show us who they are. Show us who they are. Whether the good or the bad, allow my eyes to take forth. Lift up your Come on, ask him to expose every evil, every king and diaper, everything that your children are doing on the law, everything your, your family is doing on the law. Ask him to expose. Holy Spirit, brood over us. Brood over our vision. Brood over our vision. Brood over our vision. Brood over our vision. of Jesus. Of Jesus. What the Holy Spirit does is it, he keeps us humble. He keeps us broken. And when the Spirit of the Lord is not with you, you are unbroken. And so the word is not able to penetrate you. You are not able to see God in some situations when you are unbroken. Today we're praying and we're saying, Father, Father, let any unbroken area, let any unbroken area that is resisting me, that is resisting me, that is resisting your word, that is resisting your word, that is resisting your direction, that is resisting your let it be broken, 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 come on, pray, pray the prayer. That which resists you, resist the word from entering you, resist the direction of God, resist the will of God. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Any part of your life that is still resisting the will of God. Break me, oh God. Mold me, oh God. Come on, pray. 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 
In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Any part of your life that is unbroken, that is resisting. You guys are messing up my atmosphere, media team. Any, any part of your life that is unbroken, that does not allow the light of God to permeate through you. Jesus. You see, sometimes God is speaking to you. And so your, your church hop, and these people are not preaching a good word. Meanwhile, God is speaking to you. It's just that you are not broken enough for the word to enter you. Jesus. And so for you, no one is anointed. Sometimes God is giving you specific directions, but because you are unyielded, unbroken, it is very hard for you. Sometimes God is trying to say that this is not my will, my son. This is not my will, my daughter. But because you are unbroken, you his voice cannot permeate through your ear. Holy Spirit brood. 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 And the Spirit of God broods over you. You become broken. You are so sensitive. You enter a nation and you can even feel the nation. I went to Egypt recently and I had to call Apostle. Babe, we need to change the flight ASAP. There was too many things out in the atmosphere. When you're so sensitive, you're not spooky and religious. But you are discerning enough to know that God is here or Satan resides here. And so if we're praying that the, the Spirit of God should brood over us yes, Lord. and expose things to us, Jesus. he needs to expose our unbrokenness as well too. Yes, Lord. There are areas in your life where you have decided that I will not yield. Some of you is in the area of your finances. We can talk about everything. You will jump and shout and scream. And, but when it comes to tithing, nope. I heard a man of God who said that tithing is the Old Testament, so I'm not going to do it. So you pick and choose what you want to hear. Jesus. The Spirit of God is telling you, do three days dry fasting. And you're like, mm, nobody will know the difference anyway. You are unbroken. We're praying that prayer again. Say, Father, Father, let any bro unbroken area, let any unbroken area of my life, of my life, that is resisting, that is resisting, you and the word, you and the word, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, as I open my mouth, as I open my mouth to pray, to pray, let your spirit, let your spirit brood over me, brood over me. Come on, pray. <laughs> Break me, mold me, and fashion me to your will. Break me, mold me. Break me, mold me, fashion me to your will. Break me, mold me, fashion me to your will. Fashion me to your will. Come on, pray. Let us <laughs> have a 
Every stranger from the pit of hell Jesus. that hovers over your body. Jesus. Your body is not the temple of any satanic spirit. Jesus. But your body is the temple of God. Therefore, we pray. Say, let every stranger, let every stranger from the pit of hell, from the pit of hell hovering over my life, hovering over my life causing delay, causing, delay, causing stagnation, causing, stagnation, causing, stagnation, causing let them disappear. Let them disappear. At your presence. Let them present. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Come on, pray. Spirit of the Lord, come and brood over me. Take preeminence. Take over. Take over. Take over. At the sight of you, let every demonic spirit that broods over me, that causes confusion, that causes addiction, that causes me to fail today, let your spirit brood
Jesus. Some of you will feel yourself running. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Help me run this race. Help me run this race. Of my life. Of my life. Successfully. Successfully. Today. Today. I call upon your spirit. I call upon your spirit. Help. Your help. For help. For help. Let me run this race. Let me run this race. Successfully. Successfully. As I open my mouth. As I open my mouth. To pray. To pray. Let your spirit. Let your spirit. Enter me. Kadosh, 
Jesus. May the Holy Spirit help you handle the affairs of your life. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Successfully. Yes, Lord. Successfully. Yes, Lord. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Open my ears. Open my ears. To receive instruction. To receive instruction. From you. From you. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. Today. 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 As I pray. As I pray. Let me hear your direction. Let me hear your direction. Brood over me. Brood over me. As I pray. As I pray. Pop my ears. Pop my ears. Let my ears hear. Let my ears hear. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Come on, pray.
Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, open up my understanding. Open up my understanding to understand your word. To understand your word. To understand your direction. To understand your direction. To understand your guidance. To understand your guidance. As I pray, as I pray, let your spirit brood over me. 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 Come on, cry. Open our understanding, O God. Let your spirit brood over us alone. We must get an understanding of the word of God. We must get a level of illumination in this house. You must open the word of God and receive rain. Receive revelation. Insight. You must open up the eyes of your of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. In these 21 days. In these 21 days. Fight every battle for me. 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 Come on, pray. Of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Incubate me with your fire. 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 By the end of these 21 days. By the end of these 21 days. Set me ablaze. 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus. May you see the manifestation yes, Lord. of the Spirit of God in your life. Jesus. As the Holy Spirit broods over you these 21 days, as you behold, may you take formation. Yes, Lord. As a child of God, yes, Lord. as a vessel of God, yes, Lord. as a vessel of honor, yes, Lord. I decree and I declare Jesus. upon you yes. that as the spirit of the Lord Jesus. hovers and broods over you, Jesus. that you are coming out victorious. Yes, Lord. 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 You are coming out victorious. Yes, Yes, you are coming out far. Yes, yes, 
begin to thank God tonight. Begin to thank him. As he's heard every prayer point. That he has heard every prayer point. That his ears have been inclined to you. That his spirit is brooding yes, over you. His spirit has set you ablaze. It has opened your eyes. It has opened your ears. It has opened up your understanding. It has given you direction. It has given you insight. It has made decisions on your behalf. Just lift up your voice and believe God and thank Him in advance for these prayers and the answers to these prayers. I just want you to have a level of faith and thank Him in advance. Thank Him in advance. Thank Him in advance. Thank Him in advance for exposing. For exposing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name, in the name of, Jesus. of Jesus. May we behold until we are formed. Yes, Lord. May the Spirit of God keep brooding over us until our only gaze is on Him. May we see and hear him clearly. May we begin to understand the things of the spirit as he broods over us. Anything that is void in us today, we declare the manifestation of the spirit of God to make us whole, to fill us up, to fill up every void, to fill every void. To fill every void, to fill every void, to fill every void, yes, Lord. to fill every void, yes, Lord. to fill every void. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. We thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so make sure you are doing your journal entries. And you are meditating even on the words that have been spoken to you from midnight yesterday or this morning all the way to tonight. Because we change topics at midnight. And so you're asking the Lord to brood over you. Feel free to come and sow your seed as needed. Ask that the Spirit of God broods over you. That as you sit here and wait for midnight to come. That he changes even your mindset. Your mindset concerning the way you should dress. The mindset concerning the way marriage should be. The mindset concerning your business, your finances. The mindset concerning everything that is not of the Lord. That the Spirit of God should brood over you. That he should be, begin to expose situations to you. You don't enter into heartbreak too much when the Spirit of God broods over you. You are discerning very fast. Even in marriage, when the Spirit of the Lord broods over your marriage, you are able to see the enemy behind the scenes. And so when the enemy brings a wind of confusion into your household, you are able to discern. And so as you sit here, and those of you who are online, as you sit, tell him, brood over me until I take form. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 And let us share the grace for those who are leaving. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercies shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And we bless every seed as we go into covenant that the spirit of the Lord should brood over us. Feel free to be here, lay on the floor, lay in the trenches. If you got to pray out loud, go on the side and pray. If you have to sing your way out of this, do what you have to do. If you have to write, write. Amen.
the best time to deal with the enemy is this time yes Lord. at the midnight he passed through at the midnight it was at the midnight when paul and silas they prayed and they sang praises and the bible said immediately the prison began to shake tonight there must be some earthquakes yes Lord. the foundation of the prison began to shake and the bible said and immediately immediately suddenly suddenly the doors began to open the doors begin to open and the bars the, the, the chains that they are put on their head begin to open and suddenly the door opened and they were released tonight if you have been put in chains as you pray at this midnight yes Lord may the foundation of that prison be shaken be shaken may the doors begin to open be open May the bonds begin to be released yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Say, let the burden, let the burden be broken. Be broken. As I begin to count, you shout freedom. 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 freedom.